We're joined by Amy Hagerman, our Ag Policy Specialist here at Lahoma. Amy, uh, lots of news in your world. Um, yeah. Let's start with dual use crop insurance and what kind of guidance you're giving producers. Yeah, so this was actually a, a change in the farm bill that I think could be really good for our Oklahoma producers. What dual use crop insurance means is that producers can sign up for their rainfall index insurance and they can sign up for a multi peril grain insurance. So for our winter wheat stocker producers, that means that this summer they'll be able to sign up for crop insurance and for rainfall insurance if they're planning to graze stockers on that land. The sign up, uh, the sales closing date on that is probably going to be mid-July uh, for uh, planting that's going to happen from July 16th to October 15th. The good news about this policy for our Oklahoma producers is if we get some dry times and uh, the rainfall index insurance will pay off and the grain insurance will pay off too. They can get payments under both if they choose to go that direction. The thing they need to evaluate is whether it makes sense for them to pay two premiums on their insurance. So I recommend they talk to their crop insurance agent, get the details on that and find out if that makes sense for them. What is happening in the way of ARC and PLC? Just kind of give us the rundown there and, and yeah. what the latest is. Yeah, so we've gotten a little bit of news on ARC and PLC, specifically regarding land and grass that has crop base. Now you'll recall, and we've talked in previous segments about how in this farm bill, land that's in grass from 2009 to 2017, continuously with no covered commodities planted on that land at any point, that's in a single FSA farm number, may not be eligible for ARC and PLC enrollment this time around. That doesn't mean they lose their crop base, but they won't be able to sign up for ARC and PLC. That evaluation is happening by Farm Service Agency right now. So they're looking at your crop production history reports that you have filed for that time period, and they're determining whether or not you'll be eligible to enroll in ARC and PLC this fall. It's a pretty big deal for some of our producers here in Oklahoma. Uh, so we can expect to see letters on that coming out from FSA sometime this summer. And then hopefully that is going to be the first step to actually getting enrollments for ARC and PLC started, which I, I've seen some announcements say that that could happen as early as September 1. So deadlines, there's, there's a lot to keep track of. What's the best way to stay organized? You know, I think just making sure you get all your crop production history reports in with FSA, make sure you're talking to your FSA agent, your NRCS agent, your crop insurance agent, uh, and your banker to make sure you've got everything lined out for all of these different areas because not only do we have the changes in ARC and PLC and crop insurance, but we also have the changes in the FSA loan limits that occurred in April. So just talk, keep, keep the communication lines open. That's really the best thing I can say. Make sure you're staying up to date on all of these deadlines, getting all your reporting in. It's gonna be a busy year. <laughs> Definitely, good thing we have you too. Okay, Amy, thanks yeah. for the update and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.